Deb's got the blankie. <laughs> he got the blankie. Deb's got her. Deb's got her. Will be. We're good, man. And an Arctic coat. <laughs> That's it, man. Well, hey, we got the cookies. Where's the hot chocolate at? <laughs> Reprobates. Unbelievable, man. Just for that, you're getting a Christmas present early. All right, I need to know. Well, I need to know a lot of things, but I need to know the gates of Nehemiah chapter three. There's eight of them. Now, we went through this. I think we went through this. You endured through the tribulation period. We preached on every gate. I need one, Haley. I knew you'd pick that one. I'll tell you what, when I wrote these down, I got six out of them. That was the one? No, I got, no. Everybody knows what dung gate, man. I'm going to go Bert, then over there, and I'll go over there. Bert. Well, she's still alive, but I'll go to the fish gate. Absolutely, because you go fish for men. Dung, I count all things with dung for the ecstasy of knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. We, oh, that, was, that, was a, that was back in the day. Got Karen. Is there a water gate? There is. The water gate. <laughs> That's right, Nixon. And now, I got to go over to Polly because you'll be weeping like a fool. So go ahead. They took my, I come back now, I'm still trying. Okay, we'll go to the safe people. Okay, bro. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Taylor. Sheepgate. Sheepgate, Absolutely. Astiana? Which one? That is not correct, ma'am. What? East Gate is in verse 29. <laughs> no. If I, if, I, if I didn't get that, then, that's, then I missed that one. That's I, when Christ walks over through, isn't it? <laughs> well, if you can show me that reference, then I'll eat my crow up here. But right now, I'm going to throw the crow at you. No, you're right. He does come through the Eastern Gate. It's in Nehemiah 3. So... Yeah, that doesn't count. What? That doesn't count. No, that's the, I missed that one. That's a good one. Thank you. Shut up. Okay, good. <laughs> the Eastern Gate, you picked the one that, I, yeah. So there's nine? There'd be nine. So that'd be the number of what? Eternity, right? It's fruitfulness. Perfect fruit, right? Fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Kenny, you got to get one. Recover me. Help me out. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my favorite one. Old paths, man. Yeah, that's real good. 616 of Jeremiah. We're going to have, I got two, so go Estiana and then, which, yes, you're going to have to vie for which one it is. You're going to see which one it is. Go ahead. The horse gate. The horse, the horse gate. The horse gate, there's uno, there's uno mas. There's, there's uno mas, but it's not really, it's the gate. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a different one. Okay, let's do the one that you. The valley gate. Valley gate. That's one. Yep. There's actually two more. What's the, what's the other one? It's the gate of the fountain. It's the gate of the fountain, yep. That's it, the eye of the needle, man. So, so basically, with me in 3-1, sheep gate. Verse 3, fish gate. 6, old gate. 13, valley gate. 14, Haley's gate. 15, <laughs> gate of the fountain. Uh, 26, water gate. 28, horse gate. 29, east gate. That must be the one that I missed because he's the keeper. He's not a repairer, so okay. I'm going to have to circle that one. And I'm going to write down my own secret reference, and you guys can pay me for it later. No, it's Ezekiel. I'll show, I'll show, you, where, I'll show you where it's at. Go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel 40. It's either 40 or 44. I'll show you the, the match meet to this one. Go over to uh, Ezekiel. Actually, it might be 44, Justin, to answer your question. Uh, Justin, get Ezekiel 44, 1, 2, and 3. Kenny, what happened? You okay? Oh, okay, man. All right. Just want to see. I'm not mad at Estiana yet. I will be. 40, <laughs> 44, 1, 2, and 3 there, Justin, of, of Ezekiel. 44? Yes, 44, 1, 2, and 3, please. Yep. Okay. 
he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary with look, which looketh toward the east and yep. it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince, the prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go out by the way of the same. Isn't that pretty cool? They've actually tried to get into that gate, you know. I don't know, it was not Hannibal. I'm trying to think of the, there was an emperor or a ruler that actually tried to go through that gate. Napoleon and then later General Allenby. Yeah. No, I, that, that's from Napoleon sounds. I didn't know the other one, but the, again, genius level stuff. <laughs> but yeah, they've actually tried to go through the eastern gate. That's not happened until the rightful king goes through that gate, man. While you're right here, go to Ezekiel uh, 43. While you're right here, Pauli 43, one through six, please. This is the east gate. It's a good pull, Estiana. Good job, man. 43, one through six. Mm -hmm. And his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth was shining with his glory. Amen. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the vision were like the vision that I saw by the river Shebar, and I fell down, or fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me mm -hmm. out of the house, and the man stood by me. And you don't have to go any further, but 7 says, And he said to me, Son of man, the place of my throne. And it's right after the east. Go to, go to Matthew 24. I'm not trying to stretch this out, but go to Matthew 24. Please, if you could. Well, now I got to go back, and now when I re preach this to you guys in another year, you'll have a ninth, you'll have a ninth gate to deal with them. <laughs> uh, let's let's do this, uh, brother, brother Bert. Can you do this? I'm trying to think of where I want to do this. Can you do uh, please twenty through twenty eight of Matthew twenty four? It's a good place to find the rapture for the New Testament church, right? <laughs> if you're Stephen Anderson, yeah. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Mm -hmm. And except those days should be shortened, <clears throat> there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. There shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, mm -hmm. they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. <clears throat> Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth <laughs> even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Which way does he come in the second coming? <laughs> east to west. Yeah, John, you okay over there? Okay, we're going from east. We're going from, I see everything up here. I'm like the eagle that picks out, I'm like the eagle that picks out your eyeball. So it goes from east. Now, how does the priest enter into the tabernacle? He enters east to west. I'll show you one more on this, then we'll, we'll get off this, man. This is what happens if you guys ask me questions, man. Go to Psalm 103, I think it is. I think it's Psalm 103. I think it's Psalm 103. Hmm. Psalm 103. Ask Dion if you could read verse number uh, 12. And I understand it's dealing with, uh, with Israel, and we'll be back here in a little bit, but if you could read verse number 12, is a really cool verse to go along with us. There you go. Over in Micah says he's put him behind his back. 
Isaiah says he, they're in the deepest sea. They're buried in the depths. And I, I understand it's dealing with Israel. Uh, Dr. Ruckman tells a story about a, a girl was dealing with this old, this old guy, was witnessing to this older guy, and uh, she said, well, mister, if you get saved, your, God will put your sins behind his back. And he goes, behind his back? How can that possibly be? Well, whichever way he turns, they'll still be behind his back. It's just, you know, the wisdom of a child with the scripture. So it's pretty neat. He puts them behind your back, but it's east, the, the movement is east to west. That's a good move in your King James Bible. When he, kicks them, when he kicks them out of the garden, which way does he kick them? He kicks them east. West to east is the improper movement. East to west is the proper movement in the King James Bible. Kenny, yes? Concordance to or is 113.3 from the rising of the sun. So They're going down there. There you go. The Greens came to play tonight. They brought their gloves in the whole nine, man. <laughs> brought their gloves, bats, balls, the whole thing. The <laughs> They're the new what? The the new, you know what? There it is. They're having burnt, burnt sacrifices. It's getting them, all, getting them all ready. Amen. Man. All right. How many times, this, this is an easy one. How many times have I told you, though? Uh, how many times and where does the Lord use the term Christian in a King James Bible? Now, you've got to get this. I mean, I saved this for Dr. Peacock's place. you guys got to get this. If you clicked on my and liked me, then i get all the, get all the, I got to get all the views, man. What's that? Oh, really? Yeah, they were like, yeah, they didn't. Okay, so I need, SCI, I need one of the places and how it's used. There's, there's three of them, specifically. I just gave that away, so you need to know we're there. So, okay, go ahead. Yep, go ahead, just read it for the... Yeah, what's... Uh, go ahead, fire it up. When they had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that for a year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first. That's pretty cool. Gathering together and being trained in the Word of God. That's how you get the name Christian. You might be saved, but if you're not doing that, eh, don't be using the name Christian. Haley has had her hand up for quite a while, and then Jen has her her mid up, so we'll go Haley. The men dominated the singing, and now, you know, they came out of the gate strong, now the, the ladies are taking over, man. Go ahead. Acts there you go. Yep. A little public witnessing. Give your testimony, give your witness for Christ. That'd make you a Christian. Okay, now, where's the third one? See, now, Jen had that one, but she got stymied. Where's the third one? Last one. Hold on. There's a lot of people jumping at this. Three. Two. No, we, did, we, just, we actually just had that one, 1126. So who else we got? Esty, you're killing it, man. So I got to hold on for a minute. You, okay, go ahead. Well, Bert had a stand up. He's not a man. He's not transitioning. Seriously, man. Go ahead, Polly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Justin just got crushed, man. He's bummed out. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Read it to us, please. There you go. God, on this behalf. Amen. That's it. Three times. Three times. All right, last question. We'll get into the end of the mystery of the blindness of part to Israel. I need some verses on work, labor, or a job. And don't go to the book of Job. <laughs> Uh, how long should your work shift be? How long should you work? Who should you work for? How do you, how do you work for the one that's above you or that pays you that, or is your supervisor? Um, give me some verses. Or working for the master, laboring for Jesus Christ. That, those work too, man. I mean, Jennifer? Oh, boy. That's a good one right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. I work six days, you can work six days. And that's for the nation of Israel. That's the laws given to Israel there. But that, that's a pretty cool one right there, man. No Ten Commandments. I'll go Polly and then Bert. Sorry, Polly's jumping the jumping the shark again. Bert, sorry, man. He's just dogging. Hey, Johnny, we're talking about 
the Saturday while we're waiting for you for street reading. Because the homeless people came up to us and we gave them tracks and food and then got The boys that are walking across the parking lot? Yeah. We've got her talking about this though. Um, go to Second Thessalonians 3. Oh, if any man, go ahead, man, fire it. Go ahead, just give me, get. Taking some liberties, aren't there, Brother Paul? <laughs> For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. How about verse 10? Okay, I'll hit that one too. Read one. <laughs> That's a wild one right there. That doesn't, I, I know the poor you have always with you, and there's nothing wrong with giving to the poor and help. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's a lot of people that are intentionally poor. They're intentionally poor. If you can't get a job, I just saw an advertisement on my phone for like $19.25 to go work at FedEx to handle packages. I ain't gonna do that. 20 bucks an hour? Sir. Well, that's all you're worth, though. That's, bad. That, that's, that's back before the steroids, kid. You could probably get 30 now, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, go ahead, Brother Bert. First <laughs> Corinthians 15, 58. Oh, I, there you go. Pull us back in, Berticus. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be said, Amen. The Lord, amen. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's a great one, man. One of my favorites. Estiana, then Melissa, and then we'll go over to James. We got the whole crew here going. Go ahead, please. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. You you that you got get the dramatic pause there for come on I'll give you a couple more verses Polly doesn't get a couple more verses go ahead uh, yeah, I think I read it right. fourteen and fifteen yep mm -hmm. in this day and age you're not saved by works you're saved by grace through faith but after you're saved by grace through faith you do work for your savior and those works are going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ and they're going to get tried by his fire fire the word of God and I believe the fire of his eyes using that word to see what that sort really is in the heart of that work and why you did it and the intent behind it. And only those eyes of this book can see really why you did what you did. And then that's that. whatever remains, that's reward. And if not, you suffer loss. I have Melissa, and then go ahead. Uh, Proverbs 23, 24. Be not desirous of these dainties, for they <laughs> Deceitful meat. Yeah. Labor not to be rich, from my own wisdom. Labor not to be rich. That's a great one right there, man. I mean, if you do work and God increases your wealth, well, praise the Lord. But he says earlier that riches make themselves wings, man. They fly away. The more you have, typically, the more you spend. It's just the way, it's the way human nature is. Justin, go ahead, please. Titus 3, 8, 9. There you go. This is a faithful saying, and in these things I will with all of our Mm-hmm. That they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Amen. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions Amen. and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Unless somebody has it, look at verse number 14. And let ours also learn to maintain good works necessary use that it be not unfruitful. There's nothing wrong with working after you're saved. And it doesn't keep you saved. But you work for your master and you labor for your master, knowing you're going to give an account of those works one day. So I have, who did I say over here next? James, go ahead, please, and then we'll work our way over. About late. Go ahead. Ephesians 6, 5 through 8. Uh, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men, as men pleasers, but as the servants. Amen. It's a real good one. a real good one, man. <laughs> Puts a whole new spin on I don't like my boss. Yeah. Man. Bert, what's it like working for Deb anyway? 
Did you go through your review yet? You up for your yearly review, man? <laughs> I've got, that's it. The hard task master. Yes, that's it. <laughs> mama, mama, mama. Cool go ahead, Taylor. Then uh, I got John, I got, t you got Jonathan, then you? Or who? Okay, let's go Jonathan and go to the back. Let's go Jonathan, then we'll go to the back row. Murderers row in the back. That's great. Jesus Christ will never ask you to do anything he has not done or is willing to do in his own life. If he works, you work. Doesn't he, doesn't he say the night cometh with no man can work in John 9? Are there not 12 hours a day? I got to work the works of him that sent me. I got to do it now while there's time. Taylor, and then we'll go Haley and then Karen right across the back. I had Ephesians 5, 6. That's a very. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Uh, Galatians 6, I'm sorry. 7 to 9. Go ahead. That's actually Sunday night, so don't get... No, go ahead. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Mm -hmm. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we have Everybody thinks reaping and sowing is negative because that's the way we op typically operate. What happens if you reap the Spirit? But that's a positive, positive planting and reaping. We always think, oh, I'm just going to get it in the neck. Doesn't have to be that way, but we just, because we're bent that way. Haley and then Karen, and then we'll... I'm going to try to stay working, but we'll do a 7, 7, 2, 15. Haley, I'll accept anything you do. <laughs> Go ahead. There you go. That's it. Got Brother Bert say amen, amen, amen. So you know, you know that's a good one, man. A workman. He had not to be ashamed, right? It does take work to study your Bible. It does. Uh, anybody that's ever taught a Sunday school or been involved in ministry or... Uh, I'm not going to say... You don't, you don't wing it. But boy, if you put the time and effort in, God somehow touches that thing. And he'll, he'll do it for you. He'll preach through you, but I will say this, he's not going to magically give it to you when you got, if you have not put the time or effort in. He's not just going to magically go, you're supposed to work at it. So, Karen, go ahead. Ask Dan, we've got cough drops over here if you need them. I'm not being smart with you. Okay. If you need them, I got them. Go ahead. Just like open up 15 of them and dump them in. You'd be good to go. Go ahead. Go to Karen. <laughs> Go ahead. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto him, mm -hmm. Call the laborers and give them their hire, and they from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they took the work and had received more, and they were out there to receive every man a penny. And when they had received it, they remember the guests of every man a house, saying, Thou shalt go out for one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Mm-hmm. No, that that I mean finish up the sixteen, that's fine. I'll give you papal grace. That's one of the craziest passages you'll ever read in the Bible about that penny thing. And I've heard people teach it, and I know how they apply it. 
Uh, you know, you get at the last hour, you get the same. It's a picture of eternal life. That if somebody gets saved at the end, they get the same eternal life, even though the reward might be different. But you get a penny's worth of eternal life, like a, if you were saved for 50 years. But that's the kingdom of heaven. And if you read the last, somebody read the last verse of chapter 19 of Matthew. I know, I know what it says, but I'm not going to be a, a jerk about it. I'm actually trying to be nice about it tonight. So what's 1930 say? Okay, so now he has to go into what? A parable where he's going to describe what he ended chapter 19 on. And then he ends this parable with the same thing. Last shall be first, first shall be last. That's kingdom stuff, man. It's wild, man. Uh, he tells you over in Matthew 8, it's the children of the kingdom, some of them are going to get kicked out. Oh, we're Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't care. You didn't do what I told you to do. Bind them and hand and foot, throw them out in outer darkness. The lake of fire that's on the earth during the millennial kingdom in Isaiah 34. Wild stuff, man. Oh, I'm a child of the kingdom. Oh, that's going to work really good for me. Uh, not. Okay, let's do it. Last part of... Uh, blunt, uh, all. Deborah Kocha. Go ahead. Bingo. There you go. I, you know what? I, what's that? That's it. She seeketh parka and down and yarn. She maketh a blanket for church. She, <laughs> that's good stuff, man. Hey, man. I, I've, heard, I've heard so many messages on a Proverbs 31 woman. I'm looking at that going, there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm like, she worketh willingly with her hands. All her household is clothed with scarlet. She's making clothes, making food, and then she just sits down, and if, she, if her husband praises her, she's praised. If not, keep on doing it. I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> no, you want to be your Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> not the, That's a rough passage, man. And that's why it says, a virtuous woman, far above, price far above rubies. Who can find her? That's a hard one, man. But what, what's that? I mean, she's she goes down to the merchants. I mean, I mean, that's 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 unbelievable, man. I want, that's a great. Those are, those are great verses, man. Amen. The what? Oh man! All right. All right, Isaiah, Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33. Man, these people are wild. This is a wild bunch, man. All right, Isaiah 33. Last, we've broken this down, this mystery into four. Um, I, all, I'm all kidding aside, I, I hope I'm, <laughs> I'm not born to tears. This is more heady uh, than heart. I hope it does go to your heart. I hope it uh, helps you appreciate who you are in Christ. I hope it, you appreciate how wonderful that Bible is in your lap. I can't stress that enough. I can't say it enough. There's no way I can impart to you the love I have for it. And actually, I like it. I even like it when it scolds me and gets on me, exhorts me and rebukes me and corrects me. I like that. And I, I do like it. I don't just, you're supposed to say you love it. That's just what we do because oh, I love the Word of God. Well, yeah, but do you actually like it? Do you look forward to picking it up and seeing what God would say to you on any given day or evening or whatever? And I hope through when we go through these mysteries that you, you take great joy in the mind of Christ being available to you and that you don't have to think like this world. You don't have to believe like this world says. You don't have to be tripped up by any preacher, including me. You have the Spirit of God inside you, and you have a Bible in front of you. Does He give you to pastors and teachers? 100% He does. You ought to find a good one and stick with them the best you can. But you know what? You have the best teacher of the Word of God you could ever have living inside you. It's the Holy Ghost of God. And you've got His perfect book in your lap. And so I hope you get an appreciation as we go through these verses that, folks, this is going to happen one day. The blindness in part to Israel is going to be taken away one day. And when this kingdom goes physical, you're going to see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords on that throne. And it's not the throne of New York City. It's not the throne of Ottawa. It's the throne of his father, David, in Jerusalem. Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. And Jerusalem is the city of the great king. That's the center of where God operates on this earth. That's why there's such a big, big deal about it. I remember when, uh, I remember when old Trump a dump was president, and he, uh, you know, uh, the last Trump and all the other foolishness, and all, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's probably, probably Brother Burke because he was running his campaign at the time, and uh, 
But he, uh, you know, the move, moving the capital, uh, where was it, from Tel Aviv? Was it Tel Aviv? Was it where it was? To Jerusalem. And it was like, oh, the Lord's coming back. And the last Trump did it. <laughs> you do understand what's on the Dome of the Rock right now, what that area is right now. That's inhabited by somebody who believes in a nine-year-old pervert Marian fornicator named Muhammad. That's his area. Palestine is not Israel, folks. In fact, if you read about most of those Palestinians, they hook up with the Catholics for some strange reason. Yeah. Probably more than that than you ever want to get into, but there's a lot of history between Rome and the Middle East and Muhammad. And it's not very good. And the whole thing is, the devil knows where this thing started and where it's going to end and where his end is. It's right in the Middle East. I'm glad I live in America, but honestly, Israel's where it's at, man. And not this little sliver from 1918 or 1948. No, God gave them all the way up and all the way over and all the way over here. And all, that, that all belongs to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with their king sitting on the throne. Now, right now, they're blind in part. That's one of the mysteries. Uh, you would think this, as we, as we wrap it up, we'll look at a few verses tonight before we go, is, this, is that of all the people that shouldn't be blind, of all the people that should have an understanding of what the kingdom is about and who their king is and even why he came, it would be the nation of Israel. But we've seen over the weeks their rejection of the king and the rejection of the kingdom and the rejection of the way the king was born in the manger and the fact that he's a carpenter's son and, and all a suffering savior and all that and how we went through the book of Acts and how it just turned from the Jews only to the Samaritans, then to the Gentiles, and finally Paul says, you know what? You count yourselves unworthy of, ever, uh, unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles, and the book closes. We're going to the Gentiles, and they will receive it. And then you go into Romans, to Philemon, and look what happens. Your church age, your body of Christ today, is 90 95% Gentile converted. I mean, how many of you in here, before you got saved, were ex-Roman Catholics? Okay, there's not that many in this crowd because you're kind of, yeah, you're kind of, you know, kind of brought up. But I mean, in New England, back in the day, and brother, you guys know that you're older folks, you know, most of the people that got converted were Roman Catholics. In, in, our, in our region, from like Maine down to, let's just say, New York, it was, it was just, say, you know, Gentiles. Jews ain't going to fall down in front of Mary and all that stuff. It's very rare to find a Jewish Roman Catholic, man. And you see a lot of that, those Episcopalian stuff, they get converted to Christ because... Honestly, they know a good deal when they see it. I, I think that's at the root of it. And they, they say, you know what, salvation is that easy? And the Jews are sitting there going, I can't believe God would deal with dogs and pigs, Gentiles like that. What? Well, you didn't want it. And so now God's put the veil on them and the blindness on them, but it's in part. It will be taken away one day. That's why we still preach the... You know what, you know what a blessing it is today? I don't have to worry about what town I go into to preach the gospel. I can go anywhere any place, any skin color, any economic level, and I can open my mouth for Jesus Christ. And I'm not breaking kingdom rules. I'm not breaking apostolic rules. I can preach the gospel to anybody, anywhere, today. <laughs> That's phenomenal, man. I don't have to worry about, oh, you know what? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, oh, oh, no, we're, 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 we can't talk. To, no, I can talk to anybody I want now. But the Jews need to get saved the Bible way through the gospel of the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ now, and it's very difficult for them to see, but I want to, I want to wrap this all up with this mystery. In Isaiah 33, we'll start there, and we'll look, at, uh, we'll look at God will redeem them physically as a nation, His people, one day. And I use that term, one day, for a reason. When God uses the term in that day, what's it typically point to? Typically. It's the millennial reign of Christ. Because a day with the Lord is how long? So God's seventh day of the calendar will be the day His Son sets foot on this earth, not the rapture in the clouds and the atmosphere. It's the day He sets His foot on this earth and He assumes the rod of iron, the ruling and reigning in Jerusalem as He goes to that east gate and takes the throne of His father David. And that nation of Israel, that during the church age and through the tribulation, the, they're blind, and in the tribulation period, they're going to get their king back. And it's physical. It's physical. Look what the Bible says to me in uh, uh, 33 of Isaiah. Let's do this. Uh, Brother Justin, we got a few of these around. We'll hopefully get through the whole room. Isaiah 33, I need you to go 17 to 24, please, Brother Justin. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Real quick, do you sing a song like that? 
I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose lie delight. I'll probably forget the rest of the song, so I'm going to stop for tonight. <laughs> but they get, that's, that's part of it, man. Go ahead, Brother Justin, go ahead. Thy heart shall mediate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the tower? Now, how many of you have ever heard a preacher use that for 9-11? <laughs> Meditate terror in the towers. <gasps> Terrorists took down the towers. And they, I've heard him use that verse. It's, it's pretty cool wording, but you're stupid. You're stupid. Go on. Keep on going. Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, quiet habitation, a tabernacle. That shall not be taken mm -hmm. out. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there the glorious Lord Amen. will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. Look at this. He will save us. <laughs> The sorry, loose. the cackling threw you off. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. 23 and 24, man. The tacklings are loose. They could not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. He'll save them, forgive their iniquity. That's Israel. That's their king. That's their lawgiver. That's their peace. You get that by the grace of God and the gospel of the grace of God. They get that. You've got to keep these separate, man. Jew, Gentile, church of God. You're either a lost Jew, a lost Gentile, or you're saved. You're in the church of God, the body of Christ. You've got to get that down. I keep saying that because this is how people get tricked in their Bible. Uh, they don't have a preacher or teacher that will take the time to take them through this. I'm not saying that because of me. That's not what I'm saying at, at all. But they won't, the preacher or teacher won't take them through this stuff. And it is a grind, man. But this will keep you stable when people go on the YouTube and say, you replace Israel. Uh, the, the church is taking all the physical promises. And Benny Hinn gets on there and, and Joyce Meyer and all these other clowns and say, well, uh, you must be living in sin or you're not really converted because you're sick. You have cancer. Your car's broken down. This is real stuff, guys. You don't give enough. That's why uh, you're not prosperous and your, your roof is leaking. No, my roof's leaking because I'm lazy, too lazy to go up and fix it. Yeah. But they try to transpose physical and spiritual. You and I are in a spiritual situation today. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The, the imaginations of our heart, they've they got to be ruled and governed by spiritual activity. The sword of the Spirit. This is for real when their king comes back. And it's all according to that book. Go with me over to 44. Estiana, go over to 44 of the same book. There's so many of these. I Obviously, I, I, can't, I can't pull them all out. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to. We say that for Sunday night. Uh, 44, 44, 21 to 23, please. 44, 21 to 23. Amen. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression, and as a cloud thy sin. Return from the for I have redeemed you. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower Amen. of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed David and glorified himself in Israel. Do you see the national flavor to the cloud? The clouds taking away their sins and all those things taking place. This is not national, heaven-bound, glory-filled, wiping away of your sins. This is a national thing that happens when the King comes back. Right now, what is God's status to Israel? What is His status to Israel as a nation? It's divorced. He's put away the harlot. He's put away the idolatrous woman, even still to this day. And they can get saved, redeemed through the gospel of the grace of God. But let, let's just say, for instance, the, the trumpet sounds right now. And we're out of here. 
and the gospel changes. And you see how God starts taking up. See, you don't think about that. That's, it's quiet right there. Because you don't think about it enough that you could be gone in a heartbeat and this thing resorts back to Israel. And what's God going to do through that tribulation period? He's going to try and get back his bride, man. The Father has Israel. Jesus has us as the church. The devil has Bab mystery Babylon. And that's the way it works. And right now he's divorced from her. She's put away. He's going to... That, that's a physical thing as the nation of Israel. What we're seeing here tonight is one day God is going to bring them back. But to start pulling these verses over and applying them to you and I will absolutely wreck your Bible. For you'll be a wreck, you'll be a messed up. You will. You you can you confuse these things between physical Israel and the spiritual, the church, the body of Christ. Go with me to fifty four, please. Fifty four, Kenny. Fifty four of the same book. Uh, 1 through 10, Brother Ken, do it again. Where's Ben? No. I just had, a, I had the gospel, gift of gospel rap, see? Told you. It happens, man. It comes on you. You never know. Uh, 54, 1 through 10, Brother Kenny, if you could. Sing, O brethren, thou... thou uh, if that's brethren, we're in trouble, kid. <laughs> oh, sing, brethren, the <laughs> That's okay. Kenny, I have... You're forgiven. <laughs> Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, mm -hmm. break forth unto singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of yep. the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confound, confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, there you go. and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. Look at this. For thy maker is thine husband. There you go. The Lord of hosts is his name. Amen. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Amen. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken. You got it. And grieved in spirit, and a wife of you, when thou was refused, refused say, saith thy God. Yep. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting Amen. kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, so mm -hmm. rebuke thee. Look at this. For the mountains shall be depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall they, the covenant of my peace be removed. Amen. The Lord that hath mercy on thee. That's never going away. Did you just see all that stuff in there? We, we can't do it. It's impossible. We can't do it. 30 seconds, we can do it. So he says, a little moment, a little wrath, all that stuff. Where does that take you? John 16. Uh, seven times he says, a little while. What's he mean a little while? Seven times. That's the length of the tribulation period. What's he say about Noah in there? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall also be in the coming of the Son of Man. You've got second coming and tribulation all through this here where the husband of Israel, the father, takes back his bride who is as a, a wife of her widowhood, he takes her back through that. Just for a little moment, I put you away. And that bleeds into the church age for the blindness. Can they still get saved? Yeah, but it's a spiritual redemption. It's their sins forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. They one they rejected for the better part of the first part of the book of Acts. And they can still get saved today, and the gospel still needs to be preached to them. But this thing is coming down the road. God has not forgotten what he said to that nation. He has not forgotten the land. He's not forgotten the everlasting covenant. He's not forgotten the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not forgotten David. He's not forgotten anything dealing with Israel. You can't make that mistake as you go through your Bible. This is the physical redemption 
after we've seen the blindness in part, what's happening in the church age, how they've rejected the gospel, how they, they turned away from Jesus Christ, how they put him on the cross, we have no king but Caesar, and all that stuff is rolled to them today, but God is going to hold his covenant up with them. God does not break his promise regarding Israel. He will keep it. And it's huge. as you go, Folks, 90% of your Bible has to do with Israel. Jewish apostles, prophets, warnings every once in a while to the Gentiles. I get that, like, like Jonah and all. I understand all that stuff. But as I've said before, and then Brother Gip did, you're a small and I'm a small sliver in time. This is a Jewish book. The oracles belong to them, Romans 3. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hey, this is a, we get grafted in for no reason other than the rejection uh, that they put on their Savior. But he's not going to forget them. I'm your redeemer. I will get you back. It's just going to be a small moment, a brief point in time. I'll let, and I, but I'm, go, I'm taking you back. You're just going to have to go through hell on earth. Psalm chapter 80. One of my favorite, one of my favorite praise hymns of all time. Psalm 80. Shine, Jesus, shine. Bing, 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 bing. Smash your keyboard, yes. Sorry. I just, that's the one that I'll just stick out. It just kills me, man. All I can see is the bald dude with the earring in his ear cleaning somebody's countertop. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, he'll help you scrub it down. He's, he's, about, he's a shiner. He makes things shine, man. That's a preaching point. Say amen, Kenny, right there. Psalm 80. <laughs> Brother Paul, Psalm 80. I'm pouring my heart out, and you guys are laughing at me. Psalm, Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, uh, Brother Pauly. Old Testament. Yeah. Okay. To the chief physician upon Shoshan, in Ed, Edu, son of Asa. I'll give you credit. You took it on. You saw it and you took it on. <laughs> I tried you saw it. You saw it and you're like, I better read that. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the last set of the day, buddy. And you got it on the incline right there, kid. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. 1 through 7. That's it, you threw it up, man. Bounced it and everything. Go ahead, one through seven. Give there, thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubim, <laughs> before Abraham and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Amen. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of yeah. Help you attempt with the bread of tears and give us some tears to drink in great measure. What a horrible time that tribulation is going to be, boy. Man. Now make us a, a strife unto our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Saved in seven, saved in three, save us in two. That is not Romans 10.13. We're in trouble physically. They're laughing at us. They're mocking us. They're chasing us. Would you shine and save us? As the lightning shineth from the east to the west, and the sun of righteousness arises with healing his wings, he will shine on them. But it's the physical promise. Mo, can you read with Benny cribbed out on you? All right. I'm just asking, uh, chapter, uh, so, I'm sorry, Psalm 85. Psalm 85, 1 through 4, please. The chief musician of Psalm for the son of Korah. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. <laughs> thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the uh, fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us. This stuff, us, our sins, blotted out, covered. Uh, not blah, but I mean, covered, forgiven our iniquity, covered all their sin. Thy people, God of our salvation. Captain, when you see that phrase brought back, the captivity of Jacob, who do you think of with that? Is there any particular person you think of? I, I understand it's Israel right there. I get that. Is there any particular person that a, that phrase gets ascribed to? Do you guys remember? What did God do to Job in 42.10? He turned the captivity of Job. And what's Job? 42 chapters, three and a half years, 
last half of the tribulation period. Job's a picture of the, the Israelite, the Jew going through the tribulation period. That phrase, turn the captivity, has to do with Israel being restored at the end of the tribulation period before the millennial reign of a thousand years of Jesus Christ. Every time. Every time. Every time. Turn our captivity. Would you just turn it over so we can be free? Would you come and rescue us? Would you save us? He will. Well, how do I get saved today? Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Well, yeah, but I want this one. You might not make it. And plus there's blindness on you now. Isn't it interesting how, what's the thing we've seen here? Shine, light. What hit Paul on the road to Damascus? A Jew that got blinded and saw Jesus Christ. And he's from the tribe of Benjamin, a male virgin. He's a picture of the 144,000 male virgin Jews. Even though he's a saved person, our apostle, I understand that. He gets saved out of due time. I know it's deep on a Wednesday night. You'll be all right. It's nice and cold here, so you guys are chilling like a piece of meat. It's good for you. Acts 3. I can see everybody's going for their coats, too. Karen got her coat out. I know, it's horrible. It, it's, ni it's nice for real men, Paul. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, please. Acts chapter 3, quick. Quick, 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 quick. Acts 3, we got to go quick. Acts chapter 3. Oh, that's, there's too much in this. i got to cut this down. Acts 3. There, there's, there's too much here. If you could, Mackenzie, can you please read 19 through 21? Actually, 19 through 26. Can you do that, Mac? Thank you. Excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> Repent ye therefore be, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, Amen. which the Lord will preach unto you, whom the heaven must, must read. until the time of restitution of all things. Mm -hmm. There you go. Amen. Yeah, from his iniquities. That's still being offered there. Times of restitution, sins being blotted out. He'll send his son Jesus. What was the question the apostles asked in 1 7 of Acts? Well, thou at this time do what? And he says, well, hold on, guys. You're going to receive power. The Holy Ghost come upon you. Peace be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and other parts of the earth. And then he gets taken up, and two men, probably Moses and Elijah, sit there and say, why are you standing here gazing around up in heaven? He's coming back the same way. Rapture hasn't even been talked about yet. Times of restitution. You're still at the advent. Those sins are going to be referred. They are going to be redeemed and taken care of as a nation. Deb, Luke 23, please. Luke 23. If you could, Deb, uh, 27. 27 to 35, please, Deb, of Luke 23. What uh, verse uh, Chapter 23, 27 through 35, if you could, please. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah. Right. There were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors mm -hmm. one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they depart and they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. <laughs> he's the savior right there dealing with it father forgive them and what was right before that blessed are the wombs that never have bare and given suck what's that what's that refer you to tribulation period he's on the cross says forgive him then they deride him you go to psalm 2 he'll have the heathen in derision he'll laugh from heaven with derisive laughter because you derided me i'm going to laugh at you but that salvation is right there offered to the nation of Israel. It's a wild book, man. It's a wild book. Give me a few more. Go to Jeremiah. Brother Bert, Jeremiah, put you right back in the Old Testament bondage. Jeremiah 23. Good for you. Builds character. Builds character. Builds character. I know it's kind of a drag, man. I, I want exciting stuff. We could have spinach once in a while, too. It's good for you. Popeye said it was. Uh, I need five through eight, if you could, Brother Bird, of Jeremiah 23. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a <clears throat> branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall <laughs> there be you go. Safely. This is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Amen. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries, whither he had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. The Bible says in verse number 6, thank you, Brother Bert, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. That has nothing to do with you today. Yeah, nothing. nothing. But they are going to be saved one day. Well, save like me and you? No. Their Redeemer shows back up. Their King shows up to give them back their land, the Lord our righteousness. The only way He's your righteousness now is because of 2 Corinthians 5.21. For He hath made Him be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Imputed righteousness through a perfect, holy, sinless Savior applied to whosoever will. These boys get it because that's the Lord our righteousness. He's the King. That's why I, God's, I, 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 you know what? I look forward to the rapture with great joy. But this is the day I can't wait to see. I cannot wait to see the king in his beauty sit on that throne. Can you imagine just seeing him walk on that white horse? Get up to that gate and, and he goes in, his garments are all dyed red. Walks up there, with those garments all just covered in blood from his enemies. Sits on that throne. Would anybody like to have a dispute? Bring it forward. Oh, and you 12 apostles, why don't you take your thrones? Oh, and uh, Justin Plank, why don't you take those 10 cities in Connecticut? You think I'm joking? We don't, we're too consumed with this world to think about this stuff. This is the real future, man. We believe in mythology. It usually comes from people that go to WWF wrestling. I'd, I'll choose this mythology over yours any day because it's not mythology. Jeremiah 30. Come on. You're doing good, man. Jennifer, read with the most hyperspeed, light speed you've ever had in your life. And I know you, I know you have it in you. No, I know. <laughs> could, you, could you please do... Oh, man. Mm. I, I need you to do 30... Oh, man. Four through nine, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go.
well, I'm saved. Well, are you saved that way? Well, no, I'm saved through the blood of the Lamb. You need to be saved that way now. Well, I'm going to get that one day. Not if you die right now. <coughs> Don't take the word saved as being like you and I use it. Go look it up in the Word of God and find out how God uses it. It will help you in your Bible study as you go through these terms. Israel's going to be saved one day. I love that picture with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail. I, it's too late. I'm not going to give you a picture of that one. <laughs> that's, that's a great illustration, Kenny. I mean, come on, man. What's that? Wait, you say amen to that, man? <laughs> That's funny stuff. <laughs> 33. I hope you guys save this for Sunday morning, okay? I just want to make sure you're, you know, whatever energy drink you guys took before you got here, do it again, please. All right, uh, I need Jonathan, please. 33, 15, and 16 of, 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 of Jeremiah. If I say of, of more times, it sounds more spiritual. Go ahead. Amen. Love it. Love it. Zechariah 3. We got, uh, well, it's going to work out perfectly. That's because I cut one verse out, so no. <laughs> go, go to Zechariah 3. <laughs> hey, man, I got the cheat codes up here. I mean, Deb's got the collar up. We're getting, it's getting, it's getting cold, man. <laughs> it's getting, not even the fake little fireplace is working right now, man. The light bulb went out in it. It did get a little cool in here, but that's, you know, it, it's part of the ambiance of the church, you know. You know. <laughs> no, Taylor didn't pay the bill. That's why we can't afford it. Anyway, <laughs> Zechariah, better start tithing, you know, good reprobates. <laughs> Want some heat in here? Start tithing. Start burning the carpet around here. <laughs> Zechariah 3, 6 through 10. Uh, if you could, James, Zechariah 3, 6 through 10. Amen. Amen. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Where do you see Nathaniel and John under the fig tree? That stuff is not coincidental, man. Go with me to Zechariah chapter 8. Taylor, go quick before we lose consciousness. 8, 9 through 15, please. No, well, not that quick, Tay. You know what I mean. Amen. Second coming. Amen. Mm-hmm. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> That's cool. Exodus 14. Haley, Exodus 14. Sorry, Kenny, I went backwards on you. Just like Judas, man, I went backwards. I fell backwards. Haley, Exodus 14, please, if you could. 26 to 31, please. Amen. 
above him stretched forth his hand on the spear, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. So the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. Here we go. Moses coming up just like he's going to in the tribulation period gets killed, delivered from Pharaoh, and Israel looks back and sees all the dead people. And is not the blood up all the way to the horses' bridles, and aren't the captains and the kings, their flesh gets picked apart by the ravens at the supper of the great God. And God saves them, just like he saved Israel from Pharaoh, a type of the Antichrist, thousands of years ago. Last one, Psalm 130. Karen, save the best for last, baby. Psalm 130. Psalm 130, please. We'll do the mystery of the gospel next week. That'll be, a, that'll be a fun time. Psalm 130, Karen, if you could read the whole psalm, please. A psalm of decree. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice, and thy ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Thou, Lord, shouldest hearken to Amen. Lord, yep. Amen. Who's watching for the morning? Shine, O Son of Righteousness, Malachi 4.2. Right in the morning. They're watching for the morning because the tribulation is like the night season. And their son is going to come and appear. And he's going to redeem them. And there's plenteous redemption with the Lord in that day. Brother Bert, pray for us. I know I kept you long, but that was the tribulation period, but you made it. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you. One day you are coming. So, uh, not only for us, but one day you'll come. And, yeah, amen. Uh, get the glory you deserve. We look forward to that day. Lord, thank amen. You that you keep your promises. You uh, think of the promises that were mentioned earlier after uh, the song, Stand on the Promises. Thank you. Yeah, Lord. amen. Stand on the promises that you give us. And uh, what helps to set our affections on things above, not on things of earth. And, Grow closer to you, get yeah, amen. better, stay in your word, and, and so that you, you can make these things real in our hearts and minds. We know they're real, but sometimes yeah, we don't get it that way, kind of drift off. And uh, we'll uh, thank you that one day everything, everything you said will come to pass exactly. Yeah, said. amen. And uh, when it comes to uh, do the gospel out, bring as many posters as possible with us when we go. Amen.